So let's go ahead and jump into lesson one. Now the important thing about Wireshark when you're starting to look at a trace file with it is the setup. Now, albeit when you're looking at Wireshark at the start, it's a daunting thing to look at, especially when you're first getting going with using the analyzer. So I wanna show you a few things, a few tricks that you can use to get a bit more comfort with it. Now, as you can see here on my copy of Wireshark, this is the default profile. Now that's the first thing you want to learn about setting up Wireshark. If you look at the lower right hand corner, you can see which profile you're using. But what's a profile? Well, a profile is basically a set of configurations or settings. Think about it this way. If I go out to my car, I'm six foot two. I want a certain setup for my seat and I want my steering wheel in a certain place and the rear view mirrors. And a lot of cars have the ability to just touch a button and everything goes to me. Well, my wife goes out there and she's five foot one. So she can't just jump in the same kind of settings that I like to use when I drive. So she's got another setting button. And when she hits that button, it all adjusts just to her. Now in a similar way with the uh, profiles within Wireshark. If I'm troubleshooting TCP, I might want a certain set of columns and coloring rules and filters just for that protocol. Or maybe I'm looking at voice over IP or TLS or quick. Now I'm going to want different things depending on the protocol I'm looking at. And that's exactly what profiles allow you to do to save filter buttons, coloring, uh, even dissectors. I don't always need every single Wireshark dissector for every profile. So one of the first things I want to teach you with the Wireshark analyzer is going down and let's go ahead and go to the right hand part of the screen. We're going to right click this. Now, if you're on default, that's fine. Everything that you do and change will be saved to that profile. But let's go ahead and create a new profile. And as you can see, there's several in my copy of Wireshark, but I'm going to go ahead and start a new one and we're going to call this Wireshark Masterclass. Doesn't that sound pretty cool? And then we're going to hit OK. So now we can see in the lower right, Wireshark Masterclass. At least this is just how we're going to begin in getting Wireshark set up. Now, if you notice up on top, I've got the frame number, I've got the time, source and destination IP addresses, protocol, length, and information. Now, this is where I want to start to customize things. First of all, text is a little bit small for me. So I'm going to go up to my magnifying glass, going to boost that up just a little bit. And you also notice that the columns have kind of come together. They've almost collided a little bit. So I'm going to go over here to the right, and I'm just going to click my little column adjuster and that will set up everything so nothing's overlapping. Now another thing that I like to do, now this is a personal preference, is typically if I'm looking at the, the packet detail and the packet bytes, in most cases when I'm looking at protocols, I'm looking at header values that are over here on the left and I typically have this white space that's over here on the right. So another thing that I like to do with many of my profiles is I like to put the packet bytes up here on the right. So I'm going to show you how to do that. And an important thing to learn about Wireshark is the preferences. That's where we can set up the layout and the columns and the buttons and some of the customization with the protocols. And we can do all that under Wireshark preferences. Now to get to preferences, if you're on a Windows machine, you're going to go to the edit menu and you're going to come down to preferences down around this area. But I'm on a Mac system, so I'm going to go to Wireshark preferences over here on the left. This brings up my preferences. And what I'd like to do is go ahead and go to layout. And this is where I can set up. Do I want the packet detail, packet bytes, packet list all stacked on top of each other? Uh, depending on if I have a very large monitor, I might want to adjust that. I usually use the next one over to the right. Now, another thing that's pretty fun is in a recent version of Wireshark here, I'm running 3.4.3, uh, I believe. Uh, now, under the packet, any of the panes, you can also select packet diagram, which is pretty interesting to do. In fact, just to show you that or demonstrate that, I'm going to go to packet diagram on this one. And let's go ahead and hit OK. And now we can see that our screen has reconfigured. And I also have this really neato feature where I can see the actual frame layout and packet layout for the packet that I've selected. So for example, if we take a look at packet number one, which by the way, 
I hope that you downloaded this trace file down in the description and you can follow along packet for packet. But if we go to packet number one, here we can see that encapsulated within this packet, we have ethernet, IP, and TCP. Well, over here on the right, now that I have that packet layout, I can see the ethernet framing. So there's my six byte destination, six byte source, and then my ether type. And then I have the IP header values. And in fact, if I right click this guy and I can go to show field values, it'll actually pull the values over from the packet itself and put them in that layout. Now this is pretty handy, nice way to visualize a protocol and the structure of that protocol for the headers and neat feature that was just added. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to preferences and I'm actually going to change this on my layout. Let's go to pane three. I'm going to go back to packet bytes. All right. Now, while I'm here under preferences, there's a couple other things that we're going to adjust again, just to make things a little bit easier for us. I'm going to go to columns and every packet head has to know how to use and read a Delta time column. All right. If you haven't done that yet, this is something that surely you want to make sure that you know how to add. So I'm going to come down here under columns, hit plus, and I'm going to name this column Delta. And I'm going to choose the type is going to be Delta time displayed. All right. Once I have that set up, I can go ahead and drag it up next to the time column. So now I can have a running total of time, or I can have a time of day, or I can have UTC time. And then right next to that column, I can have a Delta time, which is going to display the amount of time between displayed packets. Very useful column to have when I'm troubleshooting. So I'm going to go ahead and select OK. And if we notice up top, we have our running total of time and our Delta time. Now, by the way, the time column, this is an adjustable time column. Like I mentioned, it can be time of day. It can be a year, month, day, and then actual time of day if I want. So to adjust this and what it shows, that's where we can go to view and we can go to time display format. And this is where we can select how we want time to be represented in that time column. Now, usually I start out with seconds since beginning of capture, but hey, sometimes I have a client in New York City and they send me a trace and I go ahead and open it. And if I do time of day, Wireshark will get the time of day off of my system clock. So if it says three o'clock for them, that means noon for me. So sometimes that's also why I would like to use UTC time. All right, so we went ahead and adjusted our screen layout. We looked at the packet layout view or those header values, and we went ahead and added a delta time. Now, another thing that I like to do is I like to color certain things. Because if we look over here on the right, this is our intelligent scroll bar. And at least for this trace file, you can see how there's just a lot of beige and light blue and uh, not a lot's gonna jump out at you in this trace because there's not a lot of TCP errors and such. But this is where you would look for things like black lines with red letters. Those are TCP errors. Uh, but something else that I like to do is I like to color my TCP sins. And I'm gonna show you how to create a coloring rule because then that will help certain things jump out to you. Now again, uh, there's a, as a side note, I just wanna thank Hensung if he's watching this video. He's a, a friend of mine from Sharkfest, but he has a really good saying, if you will. And he often says, my way or the highway. And that means your settings for Wireshark are good for you. That's your troubleshooting style. So no one can ever tell you that that's wrong. If it works for you, go to town. That's why there's all these great configurations within Wireshark. I like to paint my TCP sins bright green. You might like to make them some odd color of brown. That's totally up to you. And it's your way or the highway. But right now you're on my highway. So let me show you how to paint those green. I'm going to go ahead and go up to the view menu and I'm going to come down to coloring rules. And this will show you the standard default coloring rules that come with the default profile. Some people hate these coloring rules and they delete them all or they just turn off coloring altogether. To do that, you just hit the button up on top that'll enable or disable the coloring altogether. But to add a coloring rule, we hit our little plus button and I'm going to call this one TCP sin and my filter is going to be tcp.flags.sin equals equals one. So I like to color any packet with a sin flag, even the sin and sin ack. I want that to be green, both of them. So I'm going to see the client trying to connect and the server response. 
Uh, now, you might think, well, I just want to have only the sin or only the sin axe. This is where you can start to goof around with our display filter. You can come back here to flags, show me that flags field equals equals 0x002. I'm going to show you how to get to that value, but this would just color the sin, not the sin axe. I don't like that. I like to go tcp.flags.sin, if I could type, equals equals 1. So there's my display filter. So what I'm saying is any packet that meets this filter, this is how you should color it. Okay, so now that I've got my tcp.flags.sin equals 1, now I want to come down and actually color it. So I'm going to go to the background, and I'm going to go over here, pick a nice bright packet pioneer green, if you will, a nice packet head green, and I'm going to say OK, and there we go. So now all packets that meet tcp.flags.sin equals equals 1, all of those will be green. But what I want to do is I'm going to actually drag this below the bad TCP. So what this means is if I have a sin, if I send off that sin, and if I have to retransmit it, the first sin is going to be bright green. The second one will be according to the bad TCP rules. It'll be black and red, right? So I only want the first sin to be green. Any retransmissions, go ahead and make those that, that error indicator, that bad TCP. Let's say OK. Now, initially, you notice how my first packet is white and the second one is green. If you come up here and just do a refresh, it's called another pass. That'll just refresh the view and run this trace file back through the rules that we have enabled. So that will make sure that we have everything colored right. So there we go. We just added a coloring rule. Now, again, you can add coloring rules for all kinds of things. Do you want to color the TLS handshake? Do you want to color uh, the fins? Do you want to have the resets be some type of interesting color that really jump out at you? So the coloring rules are a nice thing to add. Now, along with that, in this profile, what we also want to do is learn how to add buttons. Now, throughout this course, and if you take any of my courses, you're going to notice our display filters. We quickly get into how to set different display filters. So let's go ahead and create a button that will set a filter just for our TCP sins. How about that? So if I come down here and go ahead and pick that first packet, I'm going to show you a trick so you don't have to remember the syntax for uh, display filters. If you select our packet that has whatever it is you're going to filter for, come down into our detail view. I'm going to go down to flags and I'm going to go down to sin. Let's say I want to filter for only packets with a sin bit. So I come down here and I'm going to right click that and I'm going to say prepare as filter. Selected. Not not selected. So I'm not saying everything but. Let's go ahead and hit selected. Okay, so we can see up above in the display filter, we got tcp.flags.sin equals equals 1. Okay, that's great. So if I apply that, now I can see just the two packets in the trace that have that sin bit set. But I don't want to have to type that again. It's just one of those things. I just want to click a button and have it be there. But to do that, if I come over here to the plus button, now I'll go ahead and see our filter button where we can add a label. I'm going to call this TCP sin and my filter is that same filter as above and I can say okay now I have a button over here on the right so if I ever open up a trace file and I quickly just want to see the sins I can come over here and click that button and I only see those packets now this is where we can do a lot of customization with Wireshark you can have a lot of buttons up here and that can highlight things that you're specifically looking for in a trace file don't worry as we go forward, those are the kind of things that I'm going to teach you. Now, one final thing I'd like to teach you in this first lesson is how to add columns up on top. That's something that you're going to constantly be doing. Now, to add a column, we I showed you how to do it the long way. We can go to preferences, we can go to columns, and we can manually add one like we did with the delta time view. But instead, let's go ahead and add one the more typical way that you're going to do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to TCP and I'm going to take a look at TCP segment length. I'm going to right click this and I'm going to come down to apply as column. Now, if you notice, I have the standard frame length here by default, but I want to see the TCP segment length. And the reason is that I'm often interested in how much data is actually encompassed in the payload. So this shows me how much is this packet actually carrying in form of bytes of data. Length is nice. 
but this is often what I'm digging for. So TCP segment length is a, a frequent one that I'll have up here. In fact, it's so frequent, I'll often come over here to length and I'll right click this and I can either come down to length and uncheck it so it will disappear or I can remove this column from this profile completely. So I'm going to say remove column and now I just have my TCP segment length. So this is an initial way that you can set up Wireshark. What do we learn? Let's go down our list. We talked about our screen layout. So how to adjust that. We talked about how we can change from packet bytes to the actual header values of the packet or the protocols. We also talked about how to add a button, how to do a coloring rule, how to add and remove columns, how to add a custom column for our delta time, and to do some simple display filters. So look how much you were able to learn in lesson one of the Wireshark Masterclass. So thanks for stopping by. Make sure that you subscribe and hit the notification bell because as I come out with these masterclasses, I wanna make sure that you're notified. Great to have you and we'll see you on the next class.